Hey, hey, what is up, YouTube? Andrew Rooney here. Today, I'm going to help you out with your buzz roll because who doesn't love a good buzz roll? Step number one, buy a very expensive snare drum. Real step number one, ensure your batter and rezzo or top and bottom snare heads are relatively tight, but still okay to serve your sound when playing regular backbeat type music. Step number two, crucial, adjust your strainer, which in turn adjusts your snare wires to ensure that you do have a little bit of buzz when you strike the head. Don't choke that snare drum. Even if you're not playing buzz rolls, even if you're just playing two and four meat and potatoes, backbeat kind of music, don't choke that strainer. You're just gonna end up stretching the wires, which means you're just gonna have to have them tighter and tighter. Which means you're going to stretch them more and more. Which means you're going to have to tighten them up, which is just going to stretch them more and more. Now the first two points here, a nice tight batter and rezzo head with the strainer adjusted appropriately so that the snare is allowed to buzz a little bit. It's okay to let your snare breathe. This is kind of trial and error. Just go back and forth until you feel like you've got just the right amount of buzz coming through. But not too much, but not too little. Step number three, strike the drum right in the center and see how many bounces you can achieve on one stroke. Try the same thing an inch or two in from the rim of the drum. You should feel your sticks bouncing a little bit more the further you get away from the center of the drum and that is just because the skin is going to be tighter the closer you get to the edge. Now that area of the surface, perhaps an inch or an inch and a half inside the hoop, that is where we're going to focus our buzz roll. Over time and with a lot of practice you'll be able to fine tune and control how many bounces you can achieve with one stroke of the drum and you'll find that by adjusting your fulcrum and applying a, a slight bit of pressure but still keeping it healthy, not, not locking up too much, just applying a little bit of pressure in your fulcrum, you might be able to find that you can press down on the head. Number four, do very slow and controlled right and left strokes, each time allowing the stick to do its thing and achieving as many bounces as you can. Really important here, try and make each hand sound identical. This is the makings of a smooth buzz roll. Number five, when you've achieved a little bit of control and you can get approximately the same amount of bounces out of each hand, start overlapping the strokes. So you catch the tail of your right bouncing and then you've started your left and they start overlapping and gradually you can start speeding up the right left motion. Number six, there is a reason why the roll is not sounding smooth yet. Everything is kind of there, but it's just not smooth. And that is due to the initial transient when you're hitting your right there's a louder note when you're starting on your right and the same on your left. So you're getting this sort of cascading up and down dynamic and we want to lose that. We want to make it nice and smooth. When you first start trying to bounce or buzz your sticks like this, the first hit is just going to be much louder than the notes that follow it. Over time, try and lose that accented note. Using a mirror is really helpful for this. You can really notice if your hand's coming up really high. To have a smooth buzz roll, the sticks need to be relatively uniform in height, and it would make sense that the height of the stick is relevant to the dynamic and the volume that you're playing. If all of the stick heights are relatively uniform and even, you're going to have a smooth roll. Number seven? really important rinse and repeat go back to step one ensure that everything is right and just keep doing that until your buzz roll is killing so here's our checklist number one make sure the top and bottom heads on the snare are tight number two ensure that your strainer and the snare wires underneath your drum are at an appropriate tension and they're giving you a little bit of buzz or response when you're striking the drum number three hit the drum right in the center 
see how many bounces you can get. Do the same thing, but an inch or an inch and a half inside the rim of the drum and feel the difference. Feel how much easier it is to get multiple bounces out of one strike of the drum. Number four, do really slow, non-overlapping notes. Allow the stick to completely finish its thing and to stop bouncing on its own before you start with the other hand. Try and make each hand sound identical. Number five, start overlapping each hand or in other words, speeding up the alternating strokes. Number six, lose the accented rights and lefts and try and get a uniform low stick height. Number eight is a follow-up exercise and that is to find the subdivision or rate of notes that is gonna allow you a smooth roll at different tempos. Then you could experiment with dropping in and out of the buzz roll at the appropriate subdivision rate. The trick here is to find a subdivision rate in each tempo range that is really comfortable to play. That indicates that it's probably going to be a really good fit to sneak buzz rolls into. 70 BPM for example, too slow for me to play 16th note subdivision buzz rolls at, so I'm going to step it up to 16th note triplets. Now if I double the tempo or double that BPM rate to 140, obviously that's going to work really well for me in 8th note triplets because it's the same speed. 8th note triplets at 140, 16th note triplets at 70, your alternating movements are the same speed. Let's try an unrelated tempo. What about 100 BPM? Try and find what is a smooth subdivision rate for you at 100 BPM. For me, it might be 16th notes. I really hope this video has helped to smooth out your buzz rolls. Be sure to subscribe, like, leave a comment, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ciao.